Hi guys, so do you recall our visit to St. Sennan's Graveyard in Ishkara in County Cork? I'll link the video in the description box below. But firstly, I want to say thanks to Deb from Oz for bringing this story to my attention and to Natalie Short for her extra added information about this story as well. In late May 1895, Cork City and County was intrigued by the outrage of Inishkara. A number of soldiers of the 10th Royal Hussar Regiment stationed in Ballycolic, a few miles from Inishkara, were arrested on suspicion of desecrating a vault owned by the Colthurst family, a gentry family from Blarney Castle Estate. The Colthursts buried their dead in Inishkara graveyard, a picturesque burial ground surrounding a ruined 18th century church, which was situated on a bend of the River Lee. The family had once lived in Ardrum House, overlooking the River Valley, but the Colthursts moved to Blarney in 1874. In 1895, Miss Harriet Curry of Ardrum worked as their caretaker in Inishkara, supervising their property and their burial vaults. On the 22nd of May, Miss Curry, accompanied by two policemen, visited the Colthurst vault. She noticed that the door and its lock were broken, but this did not prepare her for the gruesome sight within. On opening the door, she saw a corpse in its grave clothes, standing on a bench, face towards the door. The legs of a body protruded from the remains of a broken coffin, while a skull lay on top of another coffin. After surveying the grisly scene, Miss Curry concluded that four coffins had been opened and one was empty. The corpse standing in the corner was that of Mrs. Peggy Colthurst, who had died in April 1863, aged 87. Her gloves had been torn off, and Miss Curry observed marks on her fourth finger of her left hand that suggested she had been wearing a ring. The body hanging out of its coffin was that of Sir Nicholas Colthurst, whose three coffins, two wooden ones surrounding a leaded coffin, had been broken open and peeled back to expose his corpse. The skull belonged to John Bowen Colthurst, Major of the 97th Regiment, who had died in May 1848. His body was clad in uniform, although Miss Curry noticed that shrouding and shavings around his hands had been ripped off. Miss Curry and the policemen returned the bodies to their coffins, but not before noticing that their bodies were in a good state of preservation. Now, the police were fortunate that there were witnesses to this dastardly and extraordinary event who came forward once the desecration was discovered. Daniel Sexton, aged just nine, and his two friends had been playing in the fields close by when a group of soldiers in the graveyard attracted their attention. Now, can you imagine the sight of a naked man emerging from a burial vault? It would have been very hard to ignore. And the River Lee that just flows close by to the cemetery was actually a favourite bathing place for the soldiers and the shore next to the graveyard was suitable for swimming. They were actually chased off by another soldier wielding a cutlass. So they did not actually see what was happening inside the vault. The children's evidence was the only hope the police had of catching these soldiers. Accordingly, the soldiers at Ballycolic barracks were paraded before the boys who recognised two men from the graveyard. When arrested, these men actually implicated three others, two of whom had transferred with part of the regiment to Newbridge. Privates Arthur Grice, Frederick Beek, Herbert Griffiths and William Henry Flack were charged with unlawfully disinterring Mrs. Peggy Colthurst and with maliciously damaging the vault. Beak and Grice were ultimately convicted at the summer assize, having confessed to being solely responsible for interfering with the coffins and bodies. Beak claimed it was done for a lark and not for stealing. All were sober at the time. Mrs. Peggy Colthurst's wedding ring was recovered from the guard room at Balacolic Barracks after Grice revealed where he had hidden it. Grice and Beak were imprisoned for six months with hard labour, for a crime the judge described as a thoughtless freak. The officer in charge of these men, Captain Arthur Poole, had left his wife's deathbed to testify to the court to their good character, but they could not escape a prison sentence. This remarkable event was not forgotten in Anishkara. 
a folklore project compiled in the 1930s, a local story recounted how soldiers of the Tent Hussars raided a very well-kept vault for valuables. After the perpetrators were caught, the regiment became the object of local ridicule, being nicknamed the Body Snatchers. Locals um, remembered that the entire regiment was penalised for years after they were compelled to do extra duties for an hour each evening. Although locals may have recalled the event years later, the regiment itself did not record this incident. Um, a regiment as fashionable as the Tent Hussars, known as the Shiners or the Shiny Tent, had no desire to remember this grotesque act of ordinary soldiers. And at the time, Albert, the Prince of Wales, was regimental colonel. Such an embarrassing event was studiously ignored by the men compiling regimental records. Regional newspapers across Britain covered the story, but it did not become a major scandal, probably because the offenders were humble soldiers rather than officers. Today, as we can see, the old Coldhurst vaults in Anishkara are crumbling and collapsing. There is little or no evidence that a caretaker still attends them now. So that's it from Inishkara and the Coldhurst vaults and this remarkable story. So for now, guys, take care. God bless. And I'll talk to you all soon.